this picture, this is a prison escape, you got your prisoner drawing a ladder up to the window with the crayon. The guards see the ladder while the prisoner is behind the door. The guards go up the fake ladder and the prisoner runs out. That is the escape. Now I'm going to talk about a few different escapes. Prison escapes involve a lot of hard work and most of the time they're just not worth it. In this speech I'll talk about three different prison escapes. While talking about the escape, I will talk about the case, how they escaped, and the end result. Patrick Johnson, an author for a Christian Science Monitor, says that Michael Elliott, an inmate, claimed escaping prison was relatively simple. When he escaped from a Michigan prison, Michael Elliott was going outside to exercise during the exercise time when he really was just going to escape prison. He put on an all-white underwear, ski mask, and white gloves to blend in with the snow. He crawled from the prison to, to and under one fence, then crawled again and went over another fence using a belt and his hands. Johnson then writes that Elliot went to a town called Ionia in Michigan and hid in a, the back of a woman's car. He said he promised not to hurt her if she did what he asked. Elliot was quoted saying, all I want to do is just get away. The woman drove them to a gas station where she escaped the car and managed to get inside the gas station bathroom where she called the cops. Elliot ran and banged on the bathroom door, but it was locked. And he tried to get her to come out, but obviously she wouldn't come out. And he figured it was just best if he would run away and try to escape on his own. Fortunately, he was captured shortly later. Author Patrick Johnson says, quote, Elliot is set to spend most of his life in prison for his role in a 1993 crime where four people were shot to death and left inside a burning home. Elliot was part of a group of people trying to rob a drug dealer, according to court records. Johnson also said, in his interview with Free Press, Elliot hoped that his escape would refocus attention on his case. He maintained his innocence, claiming he bought the gun used in the murders after the shootings. Elliot was quoted saying, if I was a crazy lunatic, I probably would have hurt someone. Unlike Michael Elliott's alone escape, <coughs> an inc incident occurred in Dannemore, New York, where two inmates escaped with some help. Inmates David Sweat and Richard Matt escaped using tools they should not have had, writes author for Time.com, Michael Vietnam. The inmates had either stolen or were giving, given the tools they escaped with. They chipped away at their cell and made a big enough hole to squeak through. Officials stated, quote, inmates cut through the steel wall in the back of their cells, crawled down a catwalk, broke through a brick wall, cut in and out of a steam pipe, then sliced through a chain lock on a manhole cover, and cover outside the prison. Guards apparently did not hear the inmates at all during their time-consuming escape, writes Vietnam. Other inmates had to have heard them during their escape but chose to keep quiet. Neighboring cells had to be rooting for them based on their choice to keep quiet. This shows that guards are just on their own and should not expect anything, any help from any inmates. Vietnam writes that many questions remain unanswered. So now I've talked about two recent escapes, but now I'll talk about a famous escape from Alcatraz in the 1900s. Inmates Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers had to be extremely patient and crafty during their escape, which took months, writes author Deborah Hawkins, Hawkinson. If they had rushed, they would have been caught, or it would have been a poor job and their escape would not have worked. They worked together from neighboring cells to be successful. Hawkinson also said, quote, for months they had been using tiny tools to chip away at concrete walls in their cells. It was painstaking work, but eventually they made holes big enough to crawl through. Once they had a way out, they climbed up the ventilation shafts behind the cell and set up a secret workshop. In this secret workshop, they made dummy heads that they put on the bed to fool the guards, which seems weird, but it worked. Also in this secret workshop, they collected raincoats for months. And using those raincoats, they created a raft that they would float away on. And this eventually worked after they escaped and they 
avoided spotlights from Alcatraz, among other guards. Quote, people have, been spec people have speculated about their fate for decades. To this day, rumors still circulate that they are alive. There have been sightings, but nothing has been proved. Quotes, or writes Hawkinson. In conclusion, you should have learned about three escapes, how they escaped, and the end result. Make sure you think before you act. These escapees were desperate, so they had to do something they weren't supposed to, and they came back to hurt them in the end. The same goes for us, because we do stuff that we're not supposed to, and usually it's, it's not good, and we end up getting caught, and there are bad consequences.